one more application of uh, surface tension um, excess pressure inside a liquid drum. Before we get into the details of this and we arrive at an equation for the excess pressure, I would strongly recommend that you uh, watch a video uh, titled Shape of Meniscus and Angle of Contact. This is one video which is titled Shape of Meniscus and Angle of Contact and I would strongly recommend that you go through this video before uh, you watch this video because there are some concepts which I have explained in detail in that video which will help you understand this in a much better way. So I am making an assumption that you have watched that video. Uh, in that video we have very briefly talked about uh, if we have a concave meniscus then the pressure on the concave side is always more than on the convex side. So here the pressure would be P plus small b and here the pressure would be P. So there is an excess pressure of P acting on this side which takes care of the force due to surface tension which would be acting in this particular direction and thus equilibrium is achieved. Same thing would happen if we have a concave meniscus. In this pressure is always more on the concave side so here you will have pressure P plus small p. Here pressure will be P, excess pressure of P acting in this direction because the force of surface tension is acting in the downward direction. So this is very briefly what we discussed in that particular video and now we will look at what happens when we have a liquid drop. Okay, so we are talking about liquid drop say for example in contact with uh, any surface or let us say air. So I will draw an exaggerated view of a liquid drop. Let us say the radius of this is R and the surface tension is T. Now if I look at one particular molecule on the surface over here, this this particular molecule because it's, it is under the effect of surface tension. So the surface tension forces are trying to pull it in this direction, they are trying to decrease the area. So the net force is acting in the downward direction and this is the concave side of the surface tension. So what, what we observe is that the pressure inside the drop inside the drop would be more. So here you will have pressure P plus small p and outside the pressure would be capital P. So this is an excess pressure of P. And because of this express, ex, uh, excess pressure, the surface area of the drop increases. So it's like a balloon blowing. Right? So the pressure is acting from all the on all the sides on the entire surface area and increasing the total surface area such that equilibrium is achieved such that the excess pressure takes care of the surface tension force and attains equilibrium. So this is what happens in case of a liquid drop in air. Now we will analyze it more closely. Why is the surface area is increasing? The surface area is increasing to increase the surface energy because the drop wants to attain a state of minimum potential energy. And we know that the work done by the excess pressure is equal to increase in the surface energy. We have discussed this detail in when we looked at the microscopic view of surface tension that work is done so that the energy of the molecules on the surface increase and that increase in surface energy is equal to the work done. So in this case the work is done by the excess pressure in increasing the surface area. Let us say the radius which was R initially increases by a very small value delta R. Now work done is equal to force into displacement. Now what is the force being applied? The force is being equal to pressure into area into displacement. So this is the excess pressure. P. The area is the area of the sphere. So initially this the radius of the sphere is R. So area will be 4 pi R square because area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi R square. I should write surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square. So the if I look at this drop as a sphere, the pressure inside is P and that is being applied in all directions and it is being applied on a surface area of 4 pi r square. So this is the force multiplied by distance and this pressure is being applied through distance delta r delta r because that's that's the increase so into delta r is equal to 
increase in surface area. Now, surface energy is T into delta A, where delta is increase in area. Now, what is the increase in area? The final area is 4 pi R plus delta R whole square minus the initial area is 4 pi R square delta A is equal to 4 pi R plus delta R whole square minus 4 pi R square. If I solve this further, I will get 4 pi r square plus 2r delta r square delta r plus delta r whole square minus 4 pi r square therefore therefore delta a is equal to 4 pi r square plus 8 pi r delta r plus 4 pi delta r square minus 4 pi r square in this case 4 pi r square 4 pi r square can cancel we will ignore this term 4 pi delta r square because delta r will be extremely extremely small and square of that will be still smaller so we will ignore this term so we will get delta a is equal to 8 pi r into delta r. so coming back over here i will get p into 4 pi r square into delta r is equal to p multiplied by delta a we have obtained let me draw a line so that into 8 pi r into delta r now if i try to get the equation for p over here i'll get p is equal to t 8 pi r into delta r upon 4 pi r square I'll write r into r into delta r so if it delta r delta r cancel 1 and pi will get cancel 4 1s are 4 2 therefore p is equal to 2 t upon r and this is the excess pressure acting inside 2 t upon r where t is the surface tension and r is the radius of the sphere so this what this is what happens in case of a liquid drop in air now finally i want to add it i want to talk about a very important aspect of this so when you have a liquid drop say for example in air so let us say this so whenever we look at this particular formula we need to identify what is the material and what is the fluid we need to be very very clear about this that we are absolutely of certain about what is the material and what is the fluid in this case the material is the liquid and the fluid is the air so if you have a liquid drop in air only the outer surface is in contact with the air so number of surfaces in contact is one over here what would happen if we have say for example say for example if we take a case of uh, say a air bubble in a liquid so here the material would be air and the fluid would be the liquid so material is air this is liquid so in this case also the air material is in contact with the liquid only on the outside inside it is not in contact with the liquid so the number of surfaces is one whereas if I take the example of a soap bubble in air now in this case what happens is the soap bubble if I draw a soap bubble over here the fluid is air so you have air outside here inside the soap bubble also there is air so you got air on both the sides of the soap bubble so what happens the number of surfaces become two and when this happens what we will have to do is that when you take delta a you will have to multiply it by two times so it will be the equation becomes t into two times delta a so you will have 2 over here, 2 over here, 2 and 2 over here and therefore this particular equation finally changes to P is equal to 4T upon R. So when we have two surfaces like this, P is equal to 4T upon R. In this case, P is equal to 2T upon R. Here also it is 2T upon R. But when we have soap bubble in air, we need to take 4T upon R for this reason. Thank you.